what is up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, which consists of all the wavelengths and frequencies of electromagnetic radiation, also known as light. And one thing that's interesting about the electromagnetic spectrum is that the only part of the spectrum that we can see is this tiny little sliver here that's labeled visible light. Everything else is completely invisible to us. So in my last video, we talked about some general properties of waves. Now, two of those properties we'll be talking about today, which are frequency and wavelength. So if you don't know what frequency and wavelength are, please feel free to click that link up there to my last video. So on this diagram here, there are two scales. There's a frequency scale that is measured in hertz, ranging from 10 to the 4th hertz all the way to 10 to the 24th hertz. And then we've got a wavelength scale which is measured in meters, ranging from 10 to the 5 meters all the way to 10 to the minus 15 meters. Notice that the left-hand side of the electromagnetic spectrum shows the low-frequency, high-wavelength light, and the right side of the spectrum shows the high-frequency, low-wavelength light. And we should also notice that on the left-hand side, where we have that uh, low-frequency, high-wavelength radiation, that, ra that type of radiation also has a very low energy associated with it. Conversely, on the right-hand side, the high-frequency, low-wavelength radiation has a very high energy. So that energy to frequency to wavelength relationship is going to be very, very important. We're definitely going to revisit that later on in this playlist. So if we sort of work left to right here, starting with the lowest frequency, highest wavelength radiation, and then working our way all the way to the highest frequency, lowest wavelength radiation, uh, that we're going to begin at radio waves. Now radio waves, these are the type of waves that are responsible for transmitting signals. So AM radio, FM radio, the signals that are transmitted in your cell phone, TV, and other forms of communication. Next on the list we've got microwaves. Now microwaves are used in radars and they're also used in microwave ovens to heat up our food. And the reason why microwaves work to heat up our food is because our food has a certain amount of water in it. And even though microwaves aren't nearly as high as some of the other forms of electromagnetic radiation in terms of energy, uh, they're, they're very easily absorbed by water molecules. And so the water molecules absorb those microwaves and they start moving around really fast, which creates a lot of heat, which heats up your food. After microwave, we've got infrared radiation, which lies just below visible light in terms of energy and frequency. So infrared radiation is very important because infrared radiation is associated with the heat that an object gives off. So anything that is warm emits infrared radiation. In fact, infrared technology is used in night vision goggles uh, that allows people to see in the dark. So that's pretty cool stuff. And then of course, after infrared, we've got visible light. So this little sliver down here is kind of blown up at the bottom of your screen, ranging all the way from 750 nanometers, the scale down here is nanometers, all the way to 400 nanometers, 750 being the red portion of visible light, and then 400 the violet portion of the visible spectrum. And then after visible light, we've got UV, which stands for ultraviolet, so you may be familiar with ultraviolet radiation. Uh, if you go out in the sun a lot, you use your sunscreen, that protects against the UV radiation that is emitted by the sun. So UV radiation has a lot of energy. Uh, most of the time, it's not very harmful as long as you're protecting your skin. Uh, but if you stay out in the sun too long without sunblock, then obviously if you've ever had a sunburn, UV radiation uh, can definitely damage biological molecules. So always be careful when you go out in the sun. And then after UV, we've got X-rays, which are relatively high energy, high frequency, low wavelength types of waves. And x-rays uh, are so powerful that they can actually uh, penetrate through human skin. And so, of course, they're used to image uh, human bones and things like that. So if you ever got an x-ray, uh, that's the type of radiation that we're dealing with. And then finally, after x-rays, we got the most powerful, highest energy, highest frequency, shortest wavelength radiation. And we call those gamma rays. So gamma rays are, again, they're very powerful. Uh, they're emitted by the sun, they're also emitted by certain unstable nuclei, and the gamma rays are very dangerous because of their energy. They can definitely damage biological molecules. So that is pretty much it. That is the electromagnetic spectrum. So in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about waves, and then after that, we're going to talk about the particle nature of light. Stay tuned for that, and have a good one.